Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking to you from uh, the British Chess Championships 2015 at the University of Warwick in Coventry. My name is Phil Aaron, Chief Executive of the English Chess Federation. This is the second uh, annual um, time that we're trying to build a uh, tradition for, uh, for being available for questions um, to an internet audience and a vast audience of people from, that are uh, finish their games or uh, otherwise attending the uh, British Championships. Um, it's not a very well attended event so far because uh, it's late in the day on the second week and so we do have some questions that were put in and uh, we're going to get to those in a moment but I first just like to say that uh, coming to the to the University of Warwick has been a great pleasure. I'm only visiting for three days, actually four days and um, the, the staff that's put on here, um, the university staff, has welcomed everybody. It's a good venue. Um, you get uh, you get your room, you get uh, walked around campus. There are maps. There are other events here. So we have this the situation where the chess isn't being held in isolation. There are other things going on. The shops are open. Uh, there's green grass outside. It's it's a very good um, venue. Additionally, we've had a record number of entries. One thousand one hundred ninety one entries, which tops our peak of Torquay by three. Uh, with 784 unique players. So we've got a lot of participation. We have a question later on about a uh, number of GMs and top players playing, which is, which is a concern. But um, hey, for those people that have uh, taken some time out of their uh, summers to come have some good chess in a good environment, uh, is, this, is a, this is turning out very well. So thanks to the team. Um, Matthew Carr is here with me. He's going to be reading some questions that are on Twitter, Facebook. And uh, where else, Matthew? Twitter, Facebook, and the English Chess Federation Forum. In the English Chess Federation Forum. Okay, thanks. So to start off, I'd just like to say that um, uh, now is a great time to be in chess. Um, in addition to the record turnout we've had here, record entries we've had here in the British Chess Championships, uh, just by anecdotal uh, observations, uh, Participation is up in the National Schools Chess Championships. That event is a time-honored tradition of the Federation, and that is growing both in participation and in uh, offerings. And you probably will see some uh, some additions to the traditional under-19 schools, under-11 schools teams, uh, girls under-11, and girls uh, under-19 teams, with the uh, addition of some more that uh, Director of Junior Chess and Education will be announcing uh, shortly. Congresses seem to be healthy, particularly in the South. Uh, we're talking with people that are in the uh, Midlands and North, and there's a, there's a need to get more tournaments up there, particularly FIDE-rated tournaments. FIDE-rated tournaments across the country, but particularly in the North, has been uh, uh, identified to me as a, as a need. And uh, yes, indeed, we need to have um, more tournaments organized. Hold on, hold on. We've just had, we're live on the internet. Please join us. And I'm uh, just making some uh, opening comments. Hopefully, you get some good dialogue with uh, the audience that's just arrived. So, welcome. I was just saying it's a good time to be in chess because participation is up around the country. Um, this is a record turnout in the British. The National Schools Chess Championships has more school teams entering than, than before. And just, I, I can sense it swelling. Maybe I'm in the bubble and I don't, you know, see real life. We don't have the resources to do a lot of objective data testing and monitoring and, you know, I can't prove it to you on data, but I can sure feel it. And um, I think that's, yeah, I think it's good. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, when you say there's record, record entries, yeah. there's a lot of people playing multiple uh, tournaments. So yes. You know, okay. Is it actually more people playing more tournaments or is it actually Good question. The the uh, the record I claim was the entry, so entry one thousand one hundred and ninety one entries, of which there are seven hundred and eighty four unique players. So a pretty big turnout, and I don't know how seven hundred and eighty four stacks up to the rest of them. That manage pretty high. Okay, um, I think that over overall, I think the chess community is a little bit more aware of uh, diversity. I'll, I'll say problem, a diversity problem we have in English chess generally, but it's not just English chess, it's it's 
other countries having similar problems where we're say again yeah but i'm not talking about overall numbers which is an issue i'm talking about um where are the females walk on the street you see a lot of females come into a chess uh, organization organization almost anywhere and you don't see them apart from uh, epska has a really good uh, uh, girls set up at the under level very very uh, in this British Championship? Okay, well, that's a, that's a, well, because the men's prize is meant to be an open prize. So it's, so we don't play chess really men and women like tennis. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, but, but I take your point. So there is a, so it's small in comparison with, with the opens. But in but just in English in champions, female, female, yeah. yeah, I I hope the internet audience is able to hear this commentary. Do you think that's uh, you think that's accurate? I'm happy to take the microphone out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well we will, but just speak up, okay? All right. Um, the British Championships. Uh, um, women who enter the championships in this this venue um in this tournament are have a free entry and that's that's the way that the uh, the ecf board is trying to promote it at least for the championship itself not for the other uh the other uh, sections couldn't, be, couldn't a lot more be done without a sponsorship yeah because generally the prize money for a, for a yeah. big child's championship is yeah. quite low really yeah yeah okay so we've had um Overall, we have a desire to increase sponsorship, um, and we've got on board a new sponsor for General English Chess. None of that money is currently for this year going into the British Chess Championships. It's going elsewhere, uh, and one of the goals for that is to increase female participation. We selected some devices within that uh, to use that money in that way. We uh, anticipate will be successful, but you know, time will tell. Um, yeah, so so we so we know it's an issue. Encouragement of women and girls is uh, is is key, and it's just as just as important as the money. I mean, it's more important than the money. Um, and overall, if you take the focus out of just this one tournament, which is a pretty good atmosphere all around, yeah. I would observe and I would respectfully submit that when that going to uh, venues across the country club venues, pub venues, church hall venues, uh, league matches, and uh, many uh, traditional congresses, you see some sparks of increased female participation. But in the main, you have an environment that does not result in females either coming or retaining. And in my view, this is just my personal view, not a board position. But in my view, that represent or that the disparity of outcome is an indicator of inequality. Now, it's not inequality of outcome that you know necessarily needs to drive everything, but it's a pretty good measure for how effective you are. I think that there is an inequality of opportunity. This is a controversial thing to say, so it's only me. And, uh, inequality of opportunity in the way that, that uh, chess is organized and conducted. What do I mean by that? I mean by, and we're not necessarily unique. Uh, we in the chess community have, uh, we're a product of society. We're in society where we have um, uh, a statement by governments and enshrined in law, there's equal opportunity for women in business. You look at the, the boardrooms of businesses, top businesses, and everybody recognizes there's a glass ceiling. Why is that? Well, there's lots of reasons, and we can get into it. Uh, and we can have all kinds of debates. We can get into why are there fewer women uh, participating in this other otherwise e equal event where it's just the brain, and you're sitting down and you're playing chess in a nice, you know, in a, what you and I might think is a nice way. Um, something's wrong if we don't see 
at least a movement toward uh, um, toward parity of what we see on the streets. I think. Perhaps the economy will will I was speaking to a lady today. She was uh, involved in the ESET Academy kicking off at the moment, and uh, she said that's reaching out to all the, all of the country to you know really to children. Yeah. And I've noticed in primary schools in, in my area where I live, when you go to sub eleven, the percentage of females is much higher. Yeah. Gender. Right. Right. And that's my experience as well. So where where are you from? Hull. Hull. Um, I, I grew up in Chess here in uh, North London and West London, but saw the same thing. Primary schools, early early years, you see rough parity of, of children picking up chess. And then social groups start to form, and it just so happens that uh, when girls, then and when the boys and girls start uh, socializing more in their genders, um, then you start to see a fall off. And you see more fall off of girls than boys. And uh, that's something we should be aware of. We are aware of it. I think teachers are out there all aware of this kind of stuff. You see it in mathematics, and you see it in some other um, uh, sciences often. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it, it's a phenomenon that chess is not alone in this phenomenon, but, uh, but by not record, but so when we, when junior organizers, and adult organizers organize for chess. It's uh, it's uh, incumbent upon us to uh, do our best to increase or to use our creative energies to find out why we're not being welcoming or why, if we are, if we are convinced we're being welcoming, why aren't the women here? Why are they just not sticking around? Is it because some of us don't uh, present ourselves nicely? Well, maybe, but whatever, you know. Do something, I would contend, and um, maybe the English Chess Federation can uh, structure some incentives in the future, possibly with a big sponsor, to uh, to reward uh, places that have greater female participation. Don't know, but uh, but that's on that's on my mind a lot. Disclosure: I hang out with women chess girl chess players uh, more than men because I have two daughters and not two sons, but. Um, I think everybody recognizes it. I'm glad you guys recognize it as well. Yeah. There's quite a lot of female teams there. And in Gibraltar, you've got like Tanya Sashtev doing commentary every every day. She's really dynamic, and there's loads of females there. And at the event, there's there's a there's a male female like fun tournament. evening no that's absolutely a uh, great observation uh, brian callahan who's a leader of that of the uh, owner of the colette i think he's the owner of the coletta hotel the venue for the gibraltar international festival places a high uh, priority his whole career on bringing in uh catering for chess players women chess players and he, he pays attention to that the prize fund is large for women there um the conditions are right for women there uh, but when I say conditions, not in the traditional chess player sense of appearance fees and prizes and money, but it's the whole package. It's the nice hotel. It's the respectful atmosphere. It's the uh, social events that come along uh, with it that, that are social events that speak to men and women uh, in, in, the, in a pleasing way. Both genders find it uh, useful or find it rewarding, fun. And uh, the chess is really exciting. Who sponsors that? Well, Tradewise is the main sponsor of that. Tradewise is now our new sponsor. They have told us that's what they want. They want greater female participation. And we're, we're just taking the very first baby step in their time with us to try to make that happen. But it does take, uh, it takes more than their cash to make it happen. It takes us as well. So I'm glad, glad you recognize that. Um, should we take a question? We we can take questions indeed. How about one question? Then it'll, I'm sure you guys will comment on it as well. Okay. Uh, Maybe. Thank you very much, Phil. We have a question here on. I'm going to take it from the ECF forum, if I may. Uh, has the ECF Junior Academy officially been launched now? 
I was under the understanding it was going to be launched at the British. That is from uh, Mr. Ben Edgar. Ben Edgar from the west of England. Uh, yes, it is. And you can go to our website and download this uh, brochure as a PDF file. And you can read about read the Prospectus 2015. So it was, uh, it was launched, and it's uh, called the ECF Chess Academy. Um, it, has, uh, it, it is going to evolve over time. In it, okay. In the big picture, it's na a national level training uh, system for for junior chess players for the youth that take up chess has been missing. Um, in our heyday of English chess, uh, we were producing a lot uh, more ions and GMs than we are now, and there's been a dearth of activity. Or, or dearth of, of uh, results as measured by titles in, uh, in, a, in several decades. So um, we recognize that. The chess press recognizes that. Leonard Barton recently writes about it. I mean, writes about it on occasion about the, the performance of the English juniors and what's happening. And you know, and you gotta respect uh, Leonard when he writes because he was uh, he was. Um, one of the main, if not the main, architect of this generation of uh, English titled players. Uh, so we're, we're giving it a go. We're giving it a go with a structured um, uh, uh, academy system that has, uh, if you can imagine, a pyramid of uh, four levels. At the very top, an elite level, and we're not paying attention to them, or we are, we're not focusing on them at the launch. Um, it, we haven't uh, the baseline level. Uh, we call it in our prospectus the local and regional level, which is uh, playing uh, all of all, well local and regional level. We're not really focusing on that at the launch either. We're focusing on the middle levels at the launch, as we've just launched uh, right now, um, and those are called the national and international levels. And just as a snapshot of what the international means, what does what does the training for with academy mean? Well, it means that parents are um, signing up with their children to uh, come into a limited um, subscription or limited uh, 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 capacity program where they have to be selected into it and they pay up front and commit to four weekends a month in a training structured syllabus is patterned off of the FIDE uh, syllabus. Uh, there is a, uh, a tournament that will go along with there with that, and there will be basically homework and in other interaction between uh, weekend training events. And it's, they're spread out, at least in 2016, uh, Liverpool, two in Daventry, and one at St. Catherine's Bramley School. Um, and you can read more detail in the in the prospectus. One of the things that that aspects that interest or that uh, I think is uh, very well placed is is um, parents activity parents are required to also attend some sessions uh, to understand how to support their children in international events how to support their children with their emotional uh, roller coasters they go through wins and losses as they're young people and as they're growing and getting used to that kind of uh, 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 competition how to marshal the resources and just what's required. And uh, so we hope to build a cadre of parents as well as the cadre of children in a, a self-supporting uh, community. And that's, uh, those are first steps that, um, that we're putting the available, uh, the traditionally available resources of funds, which come from the John Robinson Youth Chess Trust, is that money is being applied to this, to the. Uh, the first year of this academy in a very significant way. You can look at the books to find out the percentage. Um, and most of the junior director, the director at the, in, our, in our English Chess Federation that is called Junior Chess and Education is focused on this academy. Um, so yes, it is launched, Ben. Please go read about it. And uh, great. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Phil. Uh, our next question I'm going to take from the Facebook page. Uh, 
the gentleman called uh, John Chili Reese has asked, um, with this year's turnout at the British Chess Championships, uh, we have 11 English GMs, uh, two English IMs, and one English WIM. Why are the top players not playing at the British, uh, like, uh, for example, Adams and Short? We have 25 active GMs, 33 active IMs, 31 FIDE Masters in the top 100 in the UK. Should we look at maybe changing the format or limit the section to 2100 plus? Received wisdom, and I, I believe it, is that it's down to funds. The top players, say the short and the atoms, um, are professional players. Their time is valuable, that's their income, and they need uh, appearance fees to come. Uh, we don't have a sponsor as we've had in the past. Uh, a very good sponsor that uh, attracted that type of uh, top player. And so the, the choice would be to pay you know, maybe two, possibly three of those top, top uh, players in Britain to come uh, and no others, or spread the money out a little, the finite money out a little bit more widely and attract people who would accept a smaller uh, appearance fee. Um, put money into the prize fund that uh, only the top X, I don't know, maybe the top six or thereabouts uh, places of the championship uh, receive prize money. Well, that that's not a lot of GMs that are going to be compensated for their time and their talent. So um, it is where we are with uh, down to funds. I noticed that uh, one of our other directors has uh, joined us. Julian, you're welcome to sit up here with me. No, no, no. I'm very happy here. <laughs> You're doing such a fine job. So far. <laughs> oh, thanks. Okay. Um, Gary, did I miss a point on that? No. Okay. Okay. I think that it's it's down to money. It's down to sponsorship. Yeah, we need I more sponsorship here. Sixth place. Sixth place. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think do we think that answered the question? I think that answers the question rather nicely. Oh, okay. Next. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, next year, you said now we've got trade wires on board. Do you think that that fund will increase for the championship next year? Uh, trade wires is with us for one year, and uh, the uh, distribution of their sponsorship funds has been uh, allocated, and none of it's coming to the British Championship. It's going to the to uh, the Hastings International Tournament. It's a special interest of the sponsor, and it's going to the. Um, uh, the Grand Prix, and you'll notice if you go on our website and you look around, you'll see uh, the the, um, the Grand Prix prizes have been uh, added to, so that, so that club players, uh, regular league play players, have uh, more prizes to incentivize them and uh, to to participate in in the Grand Prix. There's a couple prizes for uh, banded prizes for improvement in. Uh, by juniors, and I think improvement by adult players as well. Um, so that money is is aimed at the grassroots, um, and that's uh, that's where we were set. Additionally, uh, there is some funds left over for uh, uh, helping organizers organize um, norm-seeking tournaments, and we'd be pleased to receive some ideas or some bids not formal bids, but ideas, called into our commercial director on setting up um, norm-seeking tournaments. Uh, I've spoken about this twice up in, uh, uh, well, at uh, regional AGMs up in the Midlands after the meeting with, uh, with a, uh, a valuable uh, independent organizer and also at the Manchester Chess Federation uh, say, saying that, you know, recognizing that we need, um, we need to grow chess generally we need more FIDE rated tournaments. We need need more um, uh, norm seeking tournaments. And there's some trade wise interest in helping norm seeking tournaments form and get on with it. And the point of contact for that is the commercial director, Bob Kane. Um, do we have another question? We do, we do indeed. Uh, I shall take another one from Facebook, Mr. Justin Horton, I believe. Um, he's saying that uh, the ECF contributed a thousand pounds towards the prize fund 
of the Seniors Championship last year. However, the total prize fund for the event appears to have only been £175. Is there a reason for the discrepancy, he asks. Yes, indeed. Hi, Justin. Sorry I missed uh, meeting you at the tournament last year. Um, we were in the building for the same time, and it had been nice to have met you. Um, you got your data from email from me. Uh, the ECF, in the, that email was wrong. So I'll take this opportunity to correct it for the record that uh, the ECF did not contribute 1,000 pounds toward the Pride Fund. The ECF contributed 750 pounds to the prize fund. There's no discrepancy. All I'm convinced all money has been accounted for. All money was paid out in the prizes and uh, end of story. Uh, however, um, uh, I know you as an investigative uh, type uh, person, and if you wish to uh, uh, pursue that, I think what the next step might be is to engage someone in council and ask for uh, financial oversight of that event. But it's not really necessary because uh, it's been looked at all, all in all of which ways and it was, everything was done. Uh, in the end, all money was uh, paid out properly. Next. Thank you very much, Phil. Uh, I'm going to take another, another question here from uh, Mr. Stephen C.F. Uh, on Facebook. Uh, does the ECF look to other countries' national championships for ways that ours could be improved? Uh, he says that he's played at the French national championships and there are several interesting ideas the ECF could consider. Um, one would be organising a junior events at Easter, thereby allowing strongest juniors to compete both in their age group and in the adult championships. Uh, the second one, the top boards in junior events uh, are shown in theatre uh, cinemas at the venue where GMs and IMs are, are allowed to comment on them or com are commentating on them like Andrew Martin does the main British here, uh, which is a great reward and as I say, he goes on to say he feels that this is a great reward slash incentive for under eights and upwards to get on top boards. Uh, do you have an opinion on this? Okay, so that second half, let me take the second part first, that technique of the GMs commenting on the, on the uh, juniors playing in, the, in a tournament. That's a great idea. That's wonderful. Um, a little bit is showing in this academy. When you look at the perspectives toward the end, you'll see a chess advisory panel. And uh, people who are in, into this uh, academy will have the opportunity to ask a couple of questions of a, of a GM-led panel. Uh, Glenn Fleer is going to going to coordinate it uh, to provide just that kind of training and it could and the questions from what I understand I'm not running it but from what I understand they can ask any question a question about their own game a question about a game they read about a question about the game they saw whatever and have that initial feedback but the but um, uh, the general interaction with with uh, top players happens in England at least at the um, at the representational um, teams we send abroad fairly regularly in that the ECF organizes uh, GMs, IMs, and good other players who are good at coaching um, to provide one-on-one -on -one, uh, analysis, post-game analysis, pre-game pre -game preparation, post-game analysis, and general support during events such as the World Youth Chess Championships, the English or the European Youth Chess Championships, and the continental and uh, uh, world schools so we're doing some of that but that's a good idea that you know if we had if we had the resources when we get the resources that we take a look at that uh, technique the first part of the question was do we pay attention overseas yes we pay attention um, I've been on the board for four years my first two years were as the junior the director of junior chess and education and right away someone said Phil you need to go check out what's happening in France well, the ECF didn't have a, uh, money for me to go check out what's happening in France. But I called around, and uh, it just so happens that we have uh, our own Glenn Fleer here, and his wife are deeply involved in that, uh, in that event. Um, that event is, uh, that championship is uh, sponsored very well. Um, the school, the, the, um, the half-term breaks and the term breaks um, just haven't really worked out for us yet. But it is, that that term break is the kind of the sweet spot should we get the wherewithal and organize ourselves to 
put on a new chess tournament or to move something else into that time spot. You're never going to get uh, all of the schools uh, emptying out at the same time. It's a real issue, actually, if you have a bunch of chess mad schools that want to participate in chess players that want to participate and they can't for one reason or another because school's in session. Hard to find when everybody's out. I think in France you're going to find when they're kind of out uniformly checked out. I'm not sure. Um, but yes, we are we are looking at it anecdotally. Additionally, um, one of our non-executive directors, uh, John Foley, is a member of the European Chess Union's Educational Commission. And he is personally involved in helping the ECU with a questionnaire that is looking at just those issues in a structured, methodical way about what uh, uh, about uh, how chess is serving uh, schools, not just as an educational tool, but um, in competitions such as that. So uh, he has a project with the, our Continental uh, Association for um, for looking at that in the, in the you know in a comprehensive fashion, at least in Europe. Um, you guys have any questions? Yes. I'm uh, David. I'm from Hull as well. Uh, one question, two parts. The first part is about the British Championship coming to Hull in 2017. How likely is that? Because um, it's the year, city of culture, Hull in 2017. And the other one is about game fee. Uh, is there any statistics to say how many chess players actually are? members of the ECF or pay the game fee um, by subscription or otherwise and um, is there any way to get more people paying the game fee because every time we have a meeting or a, um, an AGM or EGM in Hull it's discussed for hours and hours and hours and it never gets passed unfortunately. Um, should we become, should we pay the game fee in Hull? So Hull is debating the question, should you pay the game Yes, it was at the last AGM and it got voted out. Uh, there was a motion that every member should be, a, everybody playing chess in Hull and district should be a direct member of the ECF. So really your motion was uh, pay game fee to play in Hull and district? Is, is that separate because I am all fair with everything, but the idea is we should be paid, be members of the association somehow. Yeah. Um, you'll yeah, obviously. The association or the national um, it's talking about uh, Hull and District have got teams in the auction, mm -hmm. and to play in those teams, you should be an ECF member or you pay a game fee if you're not. So add to go towards you. You know, effectively to play, to pay a part membership for each time you play. So that's what that's what it's on about. Okay. Is, is there anything in the system to alleviate that problem or to encourage people to become members of uh, the association of the big ECF? So, uh, you might know that we that the English Chess Federation had a big grant from the government, annual grant, something in that order and it dwindled down and it stopped. Crisis, financial crisis, what to do. Membership system brought in, uh, game, fee, game fee system retained. Um, membership system uh, stayed uh, at, at the initial flat rate for three years, I believe. We had a, we had a significant rate increase just this last year. So right now, as, you, as you're renewing, you're paying uh, an increase, still good value for money, we contend. And um, we're we're all about being a we we've changed the financial flow, or the financial source of our source of our money, and it's it's membership uh, is the strategic choice that uh, that was made, and so we're we're emphasizing membership every chance we get we promote membership, and the game fee exists to kind of be the the buffer of of that. But the game fee comes with a lot of administrative uh, issues, at least at our end and your end, uh, clubs, the club's end, league's end. Um, and uh, it's not, there's no time set for us to, to uh, chop it out and stop game fee membership only. 
but we are trying to minimize the importance of game fee in our budget. How important is it to Jess in England for the people who can't do pay the game fee or our members? How important is it in Chess in England that people are either members or pay the game fee? Well, that's the best way we've figured out how to keep the, the Federation uh, operating. By operating, I mean the uh, what we spend uh, in our budget. Those spends are our, our office of two and a half employee, two and a half employees, and uh, international teams and investing in the infrastructure chess and uh, and uh, reserve. Julian. Sorry, have I got to speak into this, Matthew? Well, the world will be here. Oh uh, well, uh, let's just comment first of all on on could the British Championship move to Hull? Um, I think that's a really good idea, but I do know, you know, next year it's in Bournemouth, and I do know that at the moment, Kevin is at a point where he's got a short list. And what would help him would be if somebody said, uh, well, this is a, a, a good venue, it's got these possibilities, it's got this accommodation attached. I guess, I don't think Hull's on his list at the moment. I don't, I don't know what's on his list. Yeah. Yeah, 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 no. But what I'm going to suggest to colleagues a possibility, yeah, capital of culture. But what would help that would be if, if the local associations in Hull uh, wrote to the ECF and uh, put the case and indicated what would be, what strengths Hull would have to offer. Let me go to the other one. Uh, I come from an area where we have a mixed economy in relation to the English Chess Federation. I play in Manchester when we, we are signed up with the ECF and we pay all our, we're all members of the ECF or we play game fee. But I also play in Bolton and Bolton has voted year on year, not because they're all mean, not to pay the game fee and not to and not to join the ECF. And I, I tell them every year, I think that's a great shame because if everybody walked away from it and you didn't have a national body, um, chess in this country would be the poorer. Um, and it's, and that would be a problem. We wouldn't be represented at a national level. So all I can say to you is encourage you to encourage your colleagues to think that they have a responsibility beyond chess in Hull to ensure that there's a strong and vibrant national body which is supporting and pushing chess. Can I give you this back now? Indeed you can. Thank you very much for your time, Julian. Can I raise a couple of other uh, points? Um, I'm sorry, but I'm going to go back and do the draw for the challenge. Okay. All right. Thanks, Julian. Yeah, so I, I wanted also to say, um, just to bring up for discussion, that um, the English Chess Federation is uh, um, reviewing its its constitution. We call it the Articles of Association. How you, as a member, relate to the board. I'm one of the 10 directors on the board. And there are many other, uh, in the order of 70 volunteers in big areas of volunteering and small areas of volunteering. If you'd like to volunteer, get in touch with uh, somebody, you know how to get in touch and uh, uh, lend your services. That would be really helpful. And we run on volunteer uh, act, volunteer work. Um, that's not unique to sports, um, but it is a fact of life. And, uh, and that's, that's how chess runs. It's on the backs of volunteers who get uh, sometimes uh, remunerated for their efforts, sometimes not, but they get the satisfaction of helping, um, helping their fellow chess players, their fellow arbiters sometimes and um, putting on chess in the country. But I'm saying that the, 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 uh, uh, the our constitution has been um, not reviewed in the past 10 years. And over time, we've seen some issues that need to be tightened up or changed. Um, there's an independent review happening, and the independent review's report is not yet out. Um, and I don't know the full contents of it. I have some outline and ideas of what they're gonna say, but I don't know that, but tomorrow, um, uh, the one of the one or two of the people who are um, running this independent review are going to discuss it, and uh, please come up and ask them about it and how how Hull relates to the ECF would be 
I don't know, interesting, but more importantly, how does the, how does this, uh, body function? How does the ECF function? What's its relation to the game? And, uh, is it a, uh, how does it, how does it best serve the community? Um, what we think is needed is what I think is needed is to move. And this is personal opinion, just to move the Federation to look more like a national governing body of other sports that are run by volunteer non-profiting organizations. We don't look like that. Now we're not structured like that. Our governance is not like that. Our relationship with independent organizers is not like that. Not that it needs to change much at all, or it needs to change maybe a little bit, but not much. Um, because we're not into um, controlling everything. We're into, uh, at least the present board is, is committed to working with independent third parties in a collegial sense to you know get on with it and make chess vibrant in lots of ways that it's not now and to support it better. Um, and to do the small things that the Federation does, like this British Chess Championship, like the national schools, like the English seniors, like the uh, national or the English girls chess championship, uh, the English Junior Rapid Play. There's a ton of the, the counties championship, the under 18, under 13 counties championship, the national clubs championship, Whew. and it goes on a little bit. Organizing the international teams to go and represent the country at uh, the world and continental level, uh, both at the Chess Olympiad and the um, uh, European teams in youth and in uh, adult play. It's a vibrant, full-on uh, sporting activity. Uh, and, and we are, uh, uh, we are geared in, in that way, uh, to that end, you might remember that, uh, from the news that the English bridge union is, uh, challenging in court, uh, the high court has given them leave to, uh, challenge a sport England, um, uh, determination that bridge is not a sport. Uh, and so they're challenging that. Uh, the just justice that gave them leave to challenge that has uh, said that chess might get might want to get involved um, and your federation through a lot of uh, through a pro bono legal assistance and more than and a committee of lawyers has uh, assisted uh, the board in making a determination that yes we should explore it and we are exploring it uh, we've done a little bit more than explore it uh, we have uh, submitted papers to the court to uh, become involved as an interested party with uh, with controls so that there wouldn't be damages or uh, court costs paid in the event we lose. Uh, the court is considering that at the moment and we should have a uh, determination of that any day. Uh, and, then, and then we'll see. But this whole idea of is chess a sport or is it not um, is, uh, is consequential. It might not turn on, you know, if, if chess was a sport recognized by the UK government in England and Wales um, and in Scotland, uh, would it result in a lot more money coming into, uh, into chess? Not right away. We're, we would be a small sport. You look how the national lottery funds are distributed now. Well, we're not going to get a lot of that, if any. But what does, what we do get, or what we, what we might get, what we would get if we were designated a sport would be on the list. And so local councils, when they determine whether to support uh, juniors or to support events, often base their decisions, at least in part, if not sometimes in full, on whether this activity is a recognized sport, not a recognized culture activity or recognized game that is a sport. So in, in the Federation has had for decades this idea, uh, this goal, long-term goal to become a sport, raise our game uh, as far as our organization of, of the uh, how the community is organized and how the Federation was, uh, uh, relates to the community to, um, to be ready for that. And that's, that dovetails nicely in with this independent review and this uh, potential baby step toward maybe recognition as a sport someday. Uh, but that's some of the things that you probably, if you haven't been watching the Bridge Union news, you might not know anything about, but that's the type of thing that we do. Um, I've already talked about that we need uh, uh, so the uh, FIDE tournaments and just growing chess generally. Um, uh, we would like to help 
new organizers and existing organizers put on um, graded chess, rated chess, uh, in all forms. And uh, we helped out uh, um, a new organizer in, I think it was Watford, who was putting on a new FIDE rated rapid play uh, lately. And the uh, new organizer said, hey, how do I do this? We took the call, gave some really simple uh, pointers, hooked them up with local organizers, got it done, got a nice thank you back. That's great. We need that on a bigger scale. Um, it's recognized up and down. We need more uh, chess, uh, FIDE chess um, tournaments and FIDE chess arbiters. Arbiters are, are the lifeblood of tournament in Congress chess. And if we don't have good arbiters that know what they're doing um, and are uh, recognized for their expertise um, and hopefully not uh, coming to help, help us out to play and not and be and get out of pocket from their expenses. At least they should be uh, re rewarded in that way, as well as uh, just pats on the back and recognition. Um, we need more arbiters. Uh, the Chess Arbiters Association met yesterday here in this room, and uh, that they were talking very much about um, the need to expand and the need to recruit uh, as as one of. Uh, Uh, the things that get more more arbiters. Matthew is the manager of arbiters in the in the home area, for example, and he has a. Um, you want to talk a little about arbiters? I I can indeed. Thank you very much, Phil. I say my brief from the uh, English Chess Federation was to uh, organise arbiters courses, uh, take the reports of uh, English arbiters, take the recommendations that to say yes, this person has worked with me at these events. I can see that he is, I, I've worked with him, I've tested him, I've looked at how he works, and I consider him to be of a required standard for a level two arbiter. And I say, once I've got the necessary number of recommendations, I submit them to the director of home chess for board approval. And assuming they get past the board, they become uh, either ECF level two arbiters, or if they get uh, the three necessary recommendations from other senior arbiters, a senior arbiter themselves. And that, that was my that was my brief, and I've been trying to live up to it as uh, as best as I can. I'm uh, organising an arbiters course uh, next month, as it happens. So I do what I can. I hope I don't let my federation down. Thank you, Bane. I've I will say I've had plenty of interest for my arbiters course. There's a fide arbiters course going on the week before, so we will get more fide arbiters out of that as well. I hope. Yeah, there was a question I saw before we started about. Um, uh, about FIDE and uh, player registration as well as the FIDE online arena. Could you read it out, please? Indeed. Well, we've had, uh, we've actually had that same question uh, written twice, once by uh, Mr. Ben Edgall, if I'm saying that right, Edgell, and Mr. Carl Hibbard. Uh, the question has been, what has the ECF done in response to FIDE making everyone register with their online server in order to access historic rating information? Okay, so this is, uh, uh, we've seen this coming for a while, uh, but we didn't know the, con the, the specifics of what we know, what we suspected, what we had indications were that were coming. So what's happened lately, and we checked it out this afternoon, is that you that if you go onto the FIDE website and you want to do your research on your, on your opponent and you can still see his or her profile, you can still see the current rating, um, but you cannot see the historical data that supports that rating, you know, the, the, the trend, the history. Um, you're taken immediately to the FIDE online arena and asked to sign in uh, to that system. This is a new development. It happened while we're here at the, at the uh, while, the, while the British Championships are going on. I think it happened about three, possibly four days ago. I okay. Think. Okay. So, what are we doing about it? Is the is the question? Um, we're examining it. We are conscious, and we have been from another issue we need to talk about with this about data protection, um, and we need to recognize that we live under the uh, under the data protection laws of the United Kingdom, which are patterned off of the, English, of the European Union data protection laws. 
Uh, and at present, we're uncomfortable with uh, promoting the exchange of personal data outside the European economic area because of those laws. Um, and that has been an issue with this other is, this other um, FIDE um, uh, regulation about new FIDE players getting their first uh, FIDE identification number. Um, we have uh, there's no assurance that that data is being handled in compliance with European Union standards. What have we done about it? Well. We've contacted uh, our FIDE zonal representative, who, who happens to be the uh, delegate from the Netherlands, who has written a, a very uh, considered uh, letter to um, the FIDE executive secretary and the FIDE leadership. And we've been uh, told that a response would be coming. Uh, it hasn't rec been received yet, but that executive lives in Athens. That executive is is uh, full of, uh, in Athens is within the European Union. And uh, one should expect every confidence that, that uh, at least the knowledge of how to comply with European Union standards exists. And so we would expect some kind of a, a response in due course. Now the FIDE um, General Assembly and the FIDE, Cong FIDE uh, Congress is meeting in first week in September. This issue is not on their agenda. However, the reports from the, the commissions involved, the online commission, um, and there's another commission involved. I'm forgetting the name of it at the moment. Uh, they, they may or may not address it. We will be sending our, um, our FIDE delegate there, and we're sending another, we're not sending, but we are aware that other English people will be there. And should they wish to uh, engage with at the commission level, if we don't have time to cover all these meetings, you go to the FIDE Congress, and there, there's typically commissions that handle FIDE business meeting in, say, breakout rooms, and the general plenary session where the big decisions are made uh, is made, and we vote as one national federation in a sea of others, 100 and some, you know, 180 countries recognized by the United Nations. There's about that national chess federations recognized in the uh, in FIDE. Um, but it's not on the agenda at the big deal at the big meeting, and it's um, hopefully going to be discussed in commissions, which raises another point: How do we in England engage and interact with FIDE? Well, um, we we have a number of uh, people by their own selection or by historical legacies, uh, are members of the commission, and are leaders of the commission um, commissions and uh, leaders within the commissions, I should say, not leaders of, and um, we can engage. But your membership money is not funding that. Uh, we don't really have the capacity to, um, to have a strong um, English presence there, but we can work with people. And our international director does work with people and the people that, uh, the volunteers that, uh, that help our international director are, are engaged. Our FIDE delegate is engaged in, in the, the level of issues that raise to the, to the uh, General Assembly and the Congress itself. So yeah, we're working it, but I can't promise anything from an international organization. Did that answer the question from Adam Ralph? And, okay, okay, and Adam also, okay. Yeah. So, so just another technical point for tournament organizers who are looking at the FIDE regulations or see, and are seeing that, hey, I've got a new player here. He's playing in a FIDE tournament. Um, regulations say you're supposed to have a, a I'm supposed to um, submit with this tournament record this player's email address for the Federation to then forward on outside of the European economic community. And that's in the regulations. What are you doing about that? And what's the guidance? Well, we've taken a, a slow approach, watch to see how it's being actually implemented. And the regulations state basically that, but the, the actual functioning of the database that receives the players does not yet require it. And uh, we will um, uh, first and foremost do our best to comply with data protection laws uh, and 
we have a plan should should the should the program actually start requiring what the regulations say but we're not the only one in this problem you know with this problem there's lots of other federations and thus when our zonal representative writes to the writes to fide the issues on the table and we wait an answer meantime new players are encouraged to join and play in fide rated tournaments but it's a complicated mess. Yeah, but it is always has complications when dealing with uh, international organizations. It's it's the nature of uh, it's the nature of such things. Any more questions, Matt? Uh, I'm. And we have uh, five minutes before we'd like to try to wrap it up. Okay. Uh, I noticed in the World Team Championship there was no UK team. The reason for that. World. Are we talking the cities championship or the world? Okay, well, um, I, I don't know, but what I do know. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, our our teams and our we select we, we pick out from the FIDE list of official championship teams or championship uh, tournaments the important ones to, to go first. And I'm not I'm not familiar with what you said, so I might be just ignorant here. But we send teams to our Olympiad European team championships and those are our two big ones. Both the open team, which happens to be all men, and um, and are in the women's team, we've done side by side. Okay. But okay, after, maybe after this we can look online and see what you're talking about. Like answer that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have yeah. We just a few more minutes. There, David Levins had a question. Mr. L David Levins uh, had a question. Uh, well, he had the three points that he wanted to, to make. Do you want to take them in order of where they come? One at a time. Okay. Uh, David Levins is trying to organize what he's calling a National Chess Day. Uh, do you think the National Chess Day is a good idea? The concept of National Chess Day is an excellent idea. Okay. Uh, number two, uh, what do you think it will take for the ECF to get behind it? Organized grassroots support. By organized, I mean um, uh, representations from unions in, in a formal way, bringing up to the national body in a formal way a proposal. We have a, a, an AGM coming up in October. That would be an ideal time uh, for a motion to be put to council, uh, vetted and uh, considered properly as a nation. Uh, for the Federation to get on board such a thing. Additionally, those types of things are also can be germinated from the board or from a, a, a person, a, an enthusiast like David Levin is now acting as an enthusiast for this project that he has conceived um, and, uh, and, and bring it to us. But we haven't, we haven't quite seen a holistic plan to it. We would want to communicate, we want to coordinate that with other events, other chess days, such as we'd want to take a good look at what day it's going to be, what the purpose is, who it supports financially. Um, there's an international chess day. There's one that uh, happens in uh, the United States in, in October by resolution of Congress every day, every year. Congress puts out a special uh, um, uh, notice. It's not the right term. I forget what it is at the moment, but uh, it's a it's a motion in Congress every year that designates the day as the National Chess Day in the United States and the Federation and other independent bodies, you know, have parties in the streets. You see it online. It's great. Um, so what, what there is such a thing called an all party parliamentary group for chess. It's a new body. It's a new group of MPs that are getting together to promote chess. We would want to coordinate that effort with Parliament. Um, at least in, in, as an informational item, if not getting their support, as they do in other countries, to make it a, a you know, a full-on, fully supported event. Now, 
the uh, counter to that idea is, why do you want to go through all that bureaucracy just to get stuff done? Let it bubble up. Well, it can bubble up. And, uh, it, but that's what it takes to get the Federation on board, something that's called national, to have it, have a, have it, uh, have that word national, have the legitimacy that it warrants from the Federation. And we have to wrap it up very shortly, I'm told. Okay. In that case, then you wish, you wish to close it down now, Phil? It is nine o'clock. Uh, we have one more question, I believe, from uh, Mr. Uh, David Sedgwick. Uh, David has, uh, I'm not sure whether it's a question, it uh, doesn't have a question mark at the end of it, but it is a point. He says, there are plenty of women drinking coffee in church halls on Sunday mornings, Phil. I would have thought that dingy upstairs rooms in pubs were more of an issue. I think he's basically asking, would improved uh, playing venues uh, attract more women players, do you think? At least that's that's the interpretation I'm taking from it. Drinking coffee in church halls is what he perceives, and that the yeah, yeah. The bottom line on this women in chess and females in chess is encourage girls to play, keep them playing, encourage women to play, and welcome everybody into the chess environment as you would welcome them into your home, and that'll do it. Thank you. So uh, I think we're going to cut it off now. Thanks a lot. We'll do uh, one of these next year, I hope. I'll be more than happy to help run it again for you, Phil. All right. Thanks, guys, for up. Thank, you very, thank you very much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, until next year, time for TO to sign off.